tight to meet the demand. The riders range from just having fun to expert road and motocross riders. For more information. Here's Sassini working against Warren. Boy, Warren really getting after it defensively, and we're going to get him with the foul. His first, and that's two against the Buccaneers. It's showing you the quickness that the uh, the young man possesses out of Gainesville, Georgia, hounding Sassini. Shawna clears go backcourt to trigger the inbound. Here's Leisure yet to attempt a shot for Coastal. And a tough cover he's got today. Carter with him, but he runs him off a screen. Misfires on the three. Breeze way up in the air for the rebound and stick back. That is why Coastal Carolina recruited Breeze because of his athletic ability and his ability to get back up very quickly with the rebound and finish at the basket. Carter misfires on the long three. Leisure the long rebound. And now into the hands of Sassini. So a game of spurts early. Charleston Southern five straight. Now Coastal the last four. Sassini finds an alley and a nice finish with the left hand. Good patience right there for Sassini. Really not forcing the ball screen play, letting the play kind of develop and get to the basket, but finishing with his left hand. It shows you how skilled he really is. Not usually a scoring point guard, but he has five of Coastal's nine. They have the lead back. Quentin Goods free under, underneath, stays with it, and sticks it home. Quentin Goods is going to come on for, Coast, for Charleston Southern. You know, he just understands the game a little bit better, and he's getting well coached by Mark the Raider Ball. Bill Wallace with four points early, and a nice pace to this one. Both teams wanting to get up and down. Here's Omar Carter. Quinton Goods, the Charleston Southern transfer, started at East Carolina, now a sophomore here with the Buccaneers. Shelton Carter, the spot up three off the mark. Goods keeps it alive and then draws the foul inside. This will go against Anthony Breeze and send us to our first timeout from the coast of South Carolina. Shana clears an 11 to nine lead, a nifty play by Wallace on the back door. Had that appendectomy last Friday, just prior to the Winthrop game you and I did, and uh, still not sure when he will return. Well, the good thing about it is you give your other players that didn't get a chance to play that much minutes get better because, again, we talked about in the early status, the season focuses down to March. You get three games in March. If you win those three, if you go 0-26, you win those three games in March again to the tournament, you've had a heck of a season. Creating depth through attrition. Charleston Southern out of the timeout. Four new players on the floor. One of them, Chris Moore, the aged veteran of this team, dribbling here. Seven on the shot clock. Bailey on the take. Tough shot. And the rebound off to Sassini. Coastal on an 8-2 run. Back and forth affair early on here. Steven Sexton in for the shot of clears. His first action. He sends the pass down low, and Logan Johnson is fouled. And this will be... Terrence Greer, you see him, another new face in the game for Charleston Southern. Buccaneers also have Giedris Kanishas in and Sean Alton. So four new players. And Coastal makes the one change, inserting Steven Sexton into the lineup, going more small now, replacing Anthony Breeze. In the post, Wallace, good seal. And it just dribbles out with the left hand. But that was good game plan right there for Cliff Ellis, spreading his team out, let them play, create some one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and creating those mismatches like you just saw. Leisure has liked that three in transition, and look what he finds on the rebound and can't finish it off. Well, it was too close right then. He's a three-point shooter. <laughs> Don't shoot the layup there, Jack. Get out there and shoot the three-pointer. <laughs> Coastal by two, Charleston Southern in the front court here. There's Sean Alton. Now to Moore, the senior guard who's had a great career, and he finds himself free underneath on the nice back cut. Chris Moore's been the focal point of this program the last couple of years. 
Only 33 points away from a thousand point career, but this season with the influx of new players, Sean, Coach Radeball trying to instill his style and uh, Moore has not been as much a go-to guy as he has in the past. Well, the, the key is is recruiting and that's one of the things that uh, Coach Radeball is really kind of focused in. He's got a great staff there. They've gone out, they find good players. And when you recruit better players, you try to enhance your program. The players that you inherited, the guys that were there in the beginning, they get a little lost in the shuffle. Uh, you know, you got to give kudos to Chris Moore being solid, not creating so much of a distraction in the team and he may he may not be playing the minutes that he's accustomed to but he is a key factor and he is a leader on that squad it is coaches versus cancer weekend bringing awareness uh, to cancer research and you see a uh, coach Ellis as coaches across the country are doing wearing tennis shoes today in support of that uh, great cause which brings awareness to uh, the treatment and research we need to defeat that nasty disease and the coaches doing their part today look pretty good wearing the uh, the kicks on the sidelines. Well, I tell you, I've had a chance to wear those kicks before, and you know it's very comfortable when you don't have to stump your feet. You got those leather soles, <laughs> so I'm sure both coaches are kind of excited. And whoever gets that W today, they may start using those tennis shoes in their wardrobe. Anthony Breeze returns to the coastal lineup, giving Phil Wallace a rest. Shawnee Clears uh, flip-flop there, interior men. Tied at 11 at the 13-30 mark. Breeze from the baseline left it short, and here's Warren on the rebound back in the contest. Boy, what a flying shot by Warren. Bit ill-advised there, but Alton keeps it alive. This Jamarco Warren, he is a... Uh, a precocious freshman, to say the least. Well, I tell you, he has no conscience, and that's good. You know, the more minutes he plays, he'll understand you can't shoot every shot. You fatigue yourself. Bad shots are just like a turnover, and that right there was a bad shot. But as he continues to keep watching the game and keep learning it, he'll become a better basketball player. And Anthony Breeze runs right into his second foul as Chris Moore stood his ground, and that will force Cliff Ellis's hand. He'll have to go to the bench and shuffle the deck, which is not easy to do these days with the players he's lost. And he gets David Long in for the first time. You see him replacing Breeze, and Chad Ferguson also enters for the first time. Barkley Radebach counters with Shelton Carter returning to the contest. And here's Warren working the point. And inside a battle between Sassini and Canisius, Mario Sassini in a mismatch. And a tightly called game early. That will be the third shot of clear foul, the first on Sassini. But both teams really want a transition game, and you look like, even though it's 11-11, you're kind of like, okay, why are we in a half-court game? Let's get the transition going, either, even if it's makes or if it's misses, but when there's a half-court game, which both teams don't usually play, you're looking at a lot of fouls to be called. Deep three by Carter off the mark, and that's been the woe for Charleston Southern this year. They're very athletic, but the shooting percentage, their last in the Big South at only about 44% a game. And that is Hurdon just not scoring consistently enough. Here's Ferguson cut off by Warren. Sassini left open, misses the three ball. Shot of clear shooting has dipped off in conference play as well. They rank fourth in the league. Here's Carter on the take and one, and Omar Carter will get himself to the line. Again, transition basketball and Carter being able to penetrate 